Hi everyone, I'm Mike. This is the Sunday Art Show and this week I'm painting Leslie Garrett for Portrait Artist of the Week. As usual I'm starting out with some A2 Dallarowney mixed media paper. Now I've prepared the surface of the paper by painting on a layer of this kind of bluey grey and I mix that grey up using titanium white and then these fluorescent System 3 acrylics. So I've got fluorescent yellow, fluorescent red and fluorescent blue. These two are really quite glowy but this one, despite the label, it's, it's more like a normal blue to be honest and I've used quite a bit of that in the mix. So you can see it kind of kills the fluorescence which I'm quite happy with for this particular uh, background. Now here's my freehand sketch of Leslie so far. You can see I've just put in the basic shapes OK, so I haven't even drawn the glasses. The only real indication of the glasses is this line here where they go over the bridge of the nose and a little bit of the line there, perhaps. But I've ignored them otherwise. And you can see at the moment the, the sketch isn't, you know, it's an OK head, but it's not a great likeness. I've done that with a, uh, a Winsor & Newton watercolour marker. Uh, this is just an, an orange one. But I'm actually going to switch to this mid-blue to go over this sketch and correct my drawing. OK, so the blue line work is now complete and the main things I changed were obviously I added the glasses in now. I changed the the upper line of the eyebrows. I refined slightly the shape of the eyes, especially this one on our left. Um, I'm going to need to do a lot um, further refinement to fully capture the expression, shape of the nose and the shape of the mouth. But the rest of it actually um, I was surprised that, you know, I managed to get it pretty good on the first pass. OK, so now we're ready to paint. All right, so I'm going to switch to interactive acrylics now. I'm going to be using Burnt Umber, French Ultramarine Blue, Permanent Alizarin, Cadmium Yellow and Titanium White. So let's begin by grabbing some Titanium White. I'm just using a synthetic flat brush, which is around about half inch, three quarters of an inch thick. I'm mixing in some of the cad yellow light, a little corner on the brush of the alizarin crimson. And that's a good place to start, I feel, for the highlights of the of Leslie's face. I just sprayed both the paint on my palette and the surface of the painting with some water just to help the first coat of paint glide over the surface of the paper a little better. So having spent you know, a reasonable amount of time on the sketch, I didn't time it actually, but if I had to guess, both you know, the, t the orange and then the blue combined, it might have taken as much as, I don't know, half an hour, 40 minutes. You know, fairly, fairly simple sketch. I haven't put a lot of lines in, but uh, I took quite a lot of care with my observations. I don't use a grid. And so because of that, you know, I've got to just got to be careful, really, if I want to get the proportions correct. And having spent that time, I'm going to, going to trust the lines I've put down reasonably well. But I'm always going to try and stay alert because, you know, there, there may well still be errors. It, it'll be the first painting I've ever done if there aren't... Um, that will be the first painting I've ever done without errors if I don't find one today, let's put it that way. Um, either that or um, I, I won't be paying attention closely enough and I want to avoid both of those, uh, ideally, I guess. So what I'm doing here is looking at the large shape, so the shape of the forehead, the shape of the cheek, the patches of lighter skin within the frames of the glasses 
and my treatment of the glasses initially will be to simply ignore the fact that there are lenses within those frames and then later on in the painting I'll add the ref reflected uh, tones and colours that are present. Now the highlights I'm putting on here, they're very much one note. In other, in other words, I'm, I'm not varying the colour anywhere. Whereas in reality, some of these highlights are almost, in the photograph I've got, you know, they're almost verging on pure white. Other areas look very much a, a bluey white. But for now, it's enough to just get a light colour down on the painting. And in doing this, what, what I'm effectively doing is starting to map out the main contours of the face. So, for example, the highlight on the right hand side of the neck here, it's certainly more pinky up here than it is down here. And the highlight here underneath the chin on the front of the neck, it's nowhere near as yellow as I've just painted it. But much like my orange sketch, that, that was a starting point, and then the blue sketch was the next iteration. And so that's going to be how I'm approaching the painting as well. The next colour that I need, um, I'm going to create by grabbing some more of the white, same brush, and mixing that into the existing colour I had. Take some more of the yellow, and put that in there and then a little corner of the red once again or the crimson but this time I've just got a little bit more of that alizarin crimson in there and because my underlayer here is blue I'm going to just give that a go now I'm going to spray the the, the acrylic certainly up here it's touch dry but the, the thing with these interactives is if I spray the surface with water if I want to, I can now blend that colour a little bit. And that's what I'm going to start off with in, in, in a second. I'm going to start a little bit of blending. But my other hope is if I put a bit of this mid-tone here, now my watercolour marker is starting to run. Now that's a little bit unfortunate in this particular instance, because that's not what I want just there. But we'll just paint over that. What I was about to say was, though, what I'm hoping this will do is it'll let me create some fairly soft blending between the mid-tone and the highlight. And, and that has worked reasonably well. I've got other runs up the top here, so let's let's hide some of those. So that is one of the tricky aspects, actually, of the interactives, is that it can be quite difficult to judge with the water spray how, how much will cause everything to run. Uh, and this applies to the acrylic as well, not just the watercolour marker, which is running now. And And, you know, too little water and they won't blend at all too much and that they go too watery so now in this case I think I, I put down the right amount of water for the interactives but I kind of over egged it for the uh, for the watercolor marker nevertheless we'll, we'll make the best of it using that amount of water and having the watercolor marker run it has softened all the drawing lines that I put down and, and that's no bad thing in general when you're painting a, a woman's face so um, Hopefully it'll kind of work out for the best in a moment. So just like the, hi uh, the highlights I did earlier, I'm just looking at the largest shapes here and keeping those shapes as simple as possible. So I'm more or less ignoring any subtleties of variation in, in tone and colour. So that's jawline needs correcting just a little bit there so I've just done that now you may be thinking to yourself well you know why didn't you just use a pencil to do your initial drawing because then you wouldn't have the problem of the of the marker running and, and there are two reasons, really. The, the first is I think the, the watercolour marker shows up much better on camera than a pencil line would. 
Uh, and then secondly, you know, I often quite like leaving a little bit of that watercolour marker showing in the final painting. And, and equally, sometimes the, the watercolour marker running can give you, you know, quite wonderful effects that are difficult to achieve um, with just the acrylic. Anyway, while I've been chatting away there, I've more or less completely filled in with this second colour, Leslie's face. So let's make things a little bit darker once again. I've still got that uh, patch of colour that I was just using. We'll grab a little, just a little more of the alizarin crimson. This is quite a strong colour, you know, so you don't need much of it to create quite a change. But I want to pick up just a touch of the ultramarine blue as well and mix that fairly thoroughly in. And let's see how that looks for the beginnings of a shadow colour. So the left hand side of the face here is in quite, quite strong shadow. Then there's a little shadow being cast up here from the hair and on that cheek. This side of the upper upper lip. Just under the lower lip here. the side of the jaw or the chin I should say and it's even darker where I've just put that brush stroke but um, we'll, we'll come back and do that in a second and this left hand of the neck in general is, is much darker than I've currently got it bring a bit of shadow down there and then I need to add some of this color on the left hand side of the nose So, you know, I'm going to lose some of the ske sketch work that I did earlier, you know, which is always, well, nearly always the case with painting. So I may have to rem remake some of the observations that I made before. And again, the colour I'm putting in here within the lenses is wrong, but I'm, I'm just trying to get the tone in the right ballpark for the moment. I want to start blocking in the hair next so that I so that I you know bring the whole painting forward in stages in a roughly even manner. So just grab some alizarin crimson and I've mixed that in with the, the skin tone I had. Now I'm adding some blue but we need it, things to be much closer to a brown than the purpley colour I currently have there. So a healthy amount of the cadmium yellow and we're starting to go in the right direction. And I think that's a, a good enough starting point. So let's begin to put in some hair. Now this colour is too red really, but um, I can adjust that later if needed. Now when I paint the hair, what I tend to do is make my brush follow the direction that the hair is fa falling in. Now because this area of the hair is a little bit lighter, I'm just going, even though this is the first layer of paint for the hair, I'm just going to let the brush go a little bit more lightly there so I get a bit of dry brush. I may end up painting over that uh, in a bit but 
if some of it shows through, it's going to help create a little bit of texture. Things are lighter down here as well. But what I'll do in just a moment is come back in just like I did with the face. I now realise I could have <laughs> extended this dark area of skin tone onto the earlobe there. So that was a bit of a mistake, but, but nothing we can't fix. And sometimes, you know, it's nice even in a finished painting to perhaps leave this bit. I quite like that, even though it's not quite right. You know, perhaps I shouldn't touch that. We'll see if I can resist the temptation to put a highlight on that area later on. Now, one thing I am being careful to, to do is go, go around the glasses frames that I drew because the lines of the glasses frame, um, yeah, they're pretty precise and you know, obviously it's a geometric man-made shape, so it's a little difficult to get that right. And I don't really want to have to struggle to do it again. So I'm hoping to be able to preserve that aspect of my drawing. Now, I haven't cleaned my brush. I've simply scraped off most of the paint onto this part of the palette, but I'm going to pick up a fresh amount of titanium white and work the paint I've got on the brush already through that. And we'll see how that looks as a highlight colour for the hair. So using the brush kind of edge on, it's a little line of lighter colour there. lighter colour there. So with these interactives, you see, notice I was working wet in wet before. So I've, I have lost some of the blending, I must admit, but you saw earlier how you can blend. So that gives you soft edges. Whereas if I use the interactives more like normal acrylic, then you know I get more of a dry brush effect coming over the top here. So you can vary the textural effects that you get really, you know, really quite easily. All right, so we've added some highlights to the hair and I'm just going to grab a little bit more of that titanium white. I'm just really squinting at my reference. And I'm just going to add some even brighter highlights. Here and there. So we'll leave the hair for the moment. For the shirt Leslie's wearing, let's grab some alizarin crimson, uh, mix it into the white. I've cleaned my brush now, though, and uh, grab a touch of the yellow. And that's not a bad starting point. So I'm going to keep the treatment, as usual, of the clothing pretty simple. And on my reference, I can't actually see what's happening kind of below this line here. Um, 
so I'm not too worried about I'll put, yeah I'll frame the painting like that so I don't have to go into a great amount of detail uh, but there is a little bit of shadow uh, within this color so I'll just add a little bit of the the blue to that and uh, we'll put a hint of shadow in there and then things go very dark in here so I'll come back and do that in, in a moment um, but I can pop a little shadow in here as well I think uh, and for now at least that's probably all I need to do having mixed up that color for the shirt though what I'm going to do next is refine the well not not even refine I suppose I'm just going to fill in the glasses frames with a similar color I've just added a little bit of the alizarin crimson to the color I had mixed already I've switched now to my small filbert brush so you can see there it's not it's pretty pretty small again initially I'm just ignoring whether there are any highlights on these glasses frames just want to fill in their shape so that I can see where I'm going basically So this is quite you know, relatively precise work, so uh, please be patient with me if I'm not chatting away quite as much as I normally do while I'm doing other aspects of the demo. And it's not that these glasses frames have to be absolutely perfect. I mean, obviously that, that would be nice, but... Um, They've just got to look, you know, reasonably symmetric and convincing enough. Um, I must say, pro you know, probably one of my least favourite things to paint uh, when I am painting a portrait. I suppose perhaps what I ought to do is, is just kind of suggest their presence and be a bit bolder, perhaps, and be willing to leave gaps in the in the line of the frame perhaps that would be a better way to go maybe 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 something for the future okay i can you can just about see the line of the uh of the, of the arm of the glass is just going down there all right so they're they're in place so i can breathe again <sighs> okay um and i'll use that same color to just block in the the lips as well so we can use the same brush too and the shape of the lower lip in particular is what kind of is helping to create the how could I describe it it's, it's sort of a partial smile I guess isn't it um, There we go. So I think what's interesting is I've used exactly the same color here and here, but they look really quite different because this is against this color has got the 
I mean, in part, that's because of the underlying blue line, but also it's next to this brown colour, whereas this colour is next to the more yellowy flesh. So this looks far more vibrant than this one. So I'm quite happy with using the same colour in those two different locations. All right, well, while I've got that red colour on my brush, I'm going to just lightly mist the surface of the painting with water. I'm going to do the same for the paint on my palette. And what I'm going to do is take that reddish colour, so things has gone a little watery, I'm going to mix it into some of the brown colour I had for the hair. Maybe grab a little bit of that bluey version of the same colour. And let's see if how this is going to work for um, some of the cast shadows on the face and around the face. So, so I can put a line in there. That's I think that's being cast. Oh, that might be the line of the hair, actually. I thought that was a cast shadow, but it's not. One down there. It's coming off the glasses frame there. The shadow where I'm painting right now is a little bluer, so I may change that colour later. And this slightly darker colour could go under the nose as well. Next, I want to put in some of the darkest darks. And as a first move, I'm simply grabbing some pure ultramarine blue with my with my filbert. And I'm going to fill in the darkest shadow areas with this blue colour. Now, the plan is where where I feel I can get away with leaving the pure blue. That's what I'll do. Um, but if I feel I need to darken things further, I may add some uh, alizarin crimson, but more likely a good amount of burnt umber. And although it's quite a strong colour, ultramarine blue, it, this particular paint is r compared to some of the others, some of the other colours in the range. It's quite transparent, so it doesn't have as harsh an effect as you might first expect. Now, obviously, you know, Leslie doesn't have blue hair. But it's my painting, so I don't care. <laughs> the, um, there is something for me about the contrast between the pure ultramarine blue and the colours of uh, skin or fur on an animal. I don't know, there's something about it that I'm just drawn to, and, and I do quite often include this technique in my work, even if it's only a hint. I think it just, for me personally, I feel it, it works well with the other colours that I use. So while I've got this pure blue on the go, I think what I shall do next is go in and look, take a closer look at the eyes. So again, this is on the, for the size of painting I have today, this is, you know, fairly, fairly tricky. But we'll see how it goes. That 
wasn't too bad. So it's quite a simple line, but I feel it worked reasonably well. And that one was OK too. Now, my next thought is to add some of this glue to the glasses frames. My hope being that the transparency of the ultramarine will make the colour look a little less blue and a little pur more purple as the underlying alizarin crimson based colour shows through. Now, I'm not actually convinced that's going to be the case, but I, I think I might quite like the effect of having the glasses frames be a mixture of the blue and the purple. So in general, what I try to do when I paint is do the minimum amount in terms of brush strokes. So again, I've still got the, the blue on my brush, so I've just scraped most of that off. And I'm now mixing it in, I'll just show you actually, just mixing that in with some titanium white. And if you've seen any of my previous portraits from this series, the second season at least, um, I often use that for the whites of the eyes. Now the underlying background colour is showing through, so and that's almost, you know, it's almost doing the job for me, but I do want to just change the colour a little bit here and there. Just putting a little bit more white on my brush. Uh, Leslie has hazel green eyes, so what I'm going to do is take some of that uh, pale, very pale blue that I had before and put some of the cad yellow into it. And then, you know, add a bit more of the lighter blue. So we're just, we're not going to worry about the hazel aspect for the moment. Just going to go with the, the green and... Perhaps not quite green enough just yet, but it's the beginning of bringing the eyes to life. So let's make a slightly stronger green with some more of the cad yellow. Touch of the, there we go, that's more like it, a little touch of the ultramarine blue. And we'll put that across most of the iris, not all. I'm still leaving that first attempt, some of it showing through. So we're starting to get somewhere now. Now continuing with that green, I'm actually just going to pick up some of this colour here and I'm hoping that's going to give me a little bit of a hazel brown. I think that's worked reasonably well. So let's put some of that in. So we've got little elements of green and brown and then a sort of a very pale green. For the pupils, I often, I often just use pure ultramarine blue, but I think in this case I do need to go darker. So I'm mixing up an approximation to black with mostly the burnt umber and then a touch of the ultramarine blue. And I'm going to use this to place the pupil in the eye on our right. And then the same for the eye on our left. And the makeup Leslie is wearing is uh, on her eyelashes is really quite dark. Now, I don't want to lose entirely the blue I've used so far, but I will just darken a little bit. A touch of pure white next. On the eye. 
and that didn't work all that well. It kind of partly obscured the iris, but uh, not the iris, the, uh, the pupil. I'll put another highlight there. And another little highlight there. I'm, I'm going to come back and tweak most of that, I think. For while I have the pure white on my brush, let's grab a little bit of the ultramarine blue, just the tiniest amount. So I've got a very, very, very pale blue. And I'm going to use that to paint in some of the light catching the glasses frame. Now, the, the bit of blue I'd put down earlier is still very wet, so I, I've ended up spreading that out a little bit. So we'll come back in a second and, and fix that. So let me just refresh my brush. All right, let's have another crack at that. It's a bit more like it. it's still not quite light enough, I don't think, but we'll, we'll proceed for now. Now, there's actually some reflected light down here. It's almost the same colour. And then a few little linear reflections and a larger one here. And one just there as well. There's also a little reflected light on the frame of the glasses, on the bridge of the glasses here, on this side of the frame, down to the left of the nose, on the inside of the frame here, and then Yeah, that's about it for that colour. What I'm going to do is add uh, a little bit more blue to that same colour and a touch of the yellow to give me a very pale but reasonably luminous green. And I'm going to put a touch of that in there and in there as well. And add a bit there, and a bit there. So I still need to do further work on this area, but for now I'm going to move on. All right, well I'm going to let this part of the painting dry a bit before I go back in. So in the meantime, I'm just going to use some burnt umber mix that in with that mid-tone I have from earlier and that's going to be a pretty good starting point I feel for just filling in the uh, the eyebrows which I haven't really done anything with in terms of painting. So far at least, so let's, let's amend that situation. There's a little bit of eyebrow showing down underneath that frame as well. And that colour, I think, could work quite well on parts of the hair. So I put that blue in there for that bit of shadow but I'm just going to I'm not going to cover it completely but just kind of leave a hint of it showing
must come back to that earlobe before I forget. So let's do, let's do that just a second. So I just switched back to my flat brush to avoid having to clean the fill coat immediately. Um, and that's not, you know, not quite right in terms of tone, but OK. While I've got that on the brush, let's add a little bit there. All right, next I want to sort out the nostrils. So back to my ultramarine blue and burnt umber. Another the filbert brush. So this is the same colour that I used for the nostrils. So it's probably a little too dark, really. But um, point is to get a deep shadow area established. And I'm fairly happy with the way that's worked so far. Now I'm taking that same brush and just mixing it in with the um, the colour I used for the shirt earlier. And the reason for that is I'm going to use that to start to put in a little shadow around the mouth. Um, but that actually didn't work very well. It's turned out slightly lighter than the underlying colour. So let me clean my brush. And we'll switch instead to using uh, ultramarine blue mixed with the alizarin crimson. A bit more of the crimson. The palette's getting a little messy at the moment. I might have to give it a clean in a bit. So. Where the lips meet on the left here. Is a reasonably dark shadow. And a little bit on the right. And now I need to add a, a little bit of highlight to the lips. I've just mixed up some titanium white and the alizarin crimson, so nothing particularly complex, but just adding a few Touches of a highlight colour here. It's perhaps a little bright, but um, again, just about establishing the lighter and darker areas. Now, th this week I'm working a little bit smaller than I often do. And, and because of that, and the, the glasses and the reflections and so on, there's been quite a lot of small brushwork, really. And I'm missing being a little bit more expressive. So what I thought I'd do next is I've grabbed my slightly larger flat brush. Um, it's roughly an inch wide. Cleaned up part of my palette and I'm just dragging some titanium white across the palette. And a little bit of the cadmium yellow. Just wanted to introduce a little bit of warmth to the hair. I'm going to take the smallest corner of alizarin crimson. And I just want to see how this works with a bit more of a freer approach um, to bring the hair to life a little more. So I'm using, I haven't, you know, barely diluted the paint at all. In fact, I don't think I did. Um, and I quite like the effect so far that that's beginning to introduce to the hair. Now, the colour is really too warm for the highlights in the hair, but I, I'm going to go back later. And, and cool it down. But I just wanted to kind of get back to that feeling you have at the early stages of a painting where you're just um, you're not overly concerned with detail, just putting some swathes of colour down on the paper.
same brush but this time a mix of a lot of white and a little bit of blue and this is the cooling down of some of these highlights I mentioned a moment ago And next I want to darken that shadow. To do that I've kept the white or, or the pale blue on my brush but brought in some more of the ultramarine blue and now I'm grabbing some of the burnt umber. So I want a, a darker colour but I don't want to go too crazy just yet in terms of strength of tone. But I do want to just kill the translucence of the ultramarine blue that I had there before. Just to make it a little bit more in keeping with what's going on. So I think that's working quite a bit better. And while I'm here, I'll just adjust the size of that ear lobe a touch as well. Um, and I think that's well, I might just dry brush a little of this same colour here and there on the hair. That went on a bit heavy just there, but. It's a bit of a shame, but um, we can dry brush, you know, where needed, just to add a little more depth of shadow. Okay. All right, so I stepped away from the painting for about 10 minutes or so just to let everything dry. And the next thing I want to do is really go to town on the eyes. So, you know, really want to refine the expression and capture some of the effects in terms of reflection and so forth on the on the lenses of the glasses. Now, I'm coming in here with a little touch of titanium white, but mostly it's ultramarine blue and a little bit of burnt umber. Using the small, small filbert brush again. just paying particular attention to the shapes of both the upper lid and the lower lid. And having done that with, with this uh, particularly dark colour, I'm going to do the same sort of treatment to the other eye. Now there are some weird optical effects going on, um, but I'm going to include them. So, for example, I think there's sort of an image of the eyelash and crease above the eye just here in the glasses. I think that's what's what's happening. I'm going to include that. Uh, if I was working from life, I might not do that. You know, I might kind of adjust my point of view so that I could avoid it or adjust the lighting so that I could avoid it. But in this particular case, I think it's necessary to kind of 
help capture the look in the eyes. The next thing I need to do is darken some of the area above the eyes themselves. And so I'm going back in with that mid-tone I had from earlier. I used it down here and around the, the cheek. So let's, let's add some of that in for the moment. Now I'm going to be partly going over some of the work I did earlier with the reflections on the glasses, but that's OK. When I then repaint parts of those reflections, the the overpainting of the first iteration will simply contribute to the layered effect of the reflection. So I'm hoping that will be fairly effective. But, you know, as always, we'll see how well it actually works in practice. And then that same colour, there's a little bit of a, a curved cast shadow below the, the right of the eye. So I'm going to put that in. And then use that same colour, but very gently applied with almost no paint on the brush. Add a few little lines here and there. Some of these are cast shadows, some of these are sort of laughter lines. A little touch there. A couple there as, as well. The dark green that I'm adding now is simply a mixture of, it's mostly ultramarine blue with some cadmium yellow. So it's a very simple mix. I just needed a few touches of that before I paint the lighter highlights in on the reflections. So I've taken that same colour, but with way more titanium white in. To begin to add some highlights on these lenses. And there isn't really a highlight quite where I'm putting it here, but I'm just I just feel it needs it. So so that's what I'm going with. Next, I'm using the same brush, but with titanium white and pure cad yellow. And this is kind of an intermediate step before I add some paler, whiter highlights. certain areas.
Now momentarily switching back to pure alizarin and crimson now because I want to, I'm not liking any more the blue of the, the glasses frame and I want to bring it back to closer to its original colour. So sometimes modifying the palette from reality sometimes that works you know really well other times not so good you know so if i've if i've kind of made a decision uh you know which veers away from reality and it's kind of working for the overall painting then that, that's cool i'll you know I'm ha i'll happily stick with it but um in this case it's i don't think it i don't think the glass is being that more bluey colour were really helping the painting as a whole. So, so I've brought them back a little closer to what they are in reality. Next, let's strengthen some of the shadows under the under the jawline here because there are key areas which need to be a little darker than they actually are. Um, so there's a little touch here at the front of the chin and on this left side of the chin as well. And if some of these come out to be too strong, I can always soften them a little bit in a moment. You know, they don't have to. Everything is you know, subject to modification if necessary. So there's quite a strong shadow on the left hand side of the nose here and round here, around the nostril. I'm just going to add a little bit of white and a touch of the yellow to that same mixture. strengthen the shadow cast by the, the left hand side of the glasses there and the left hand side of the cheek and then we can use this same colour on the nose bring in a bit more shadow there within the glasses But, but th that colour is a little too strong for here, so let's lighten it a little further and I'll use that to kind of soften the edge of that shadow on the cheek and then bring that colour in here. Let's soften that shadow on the end of the chin as well and kind of soften the edge of that other part of the shadow. Some more blue and some more of the alizarin in the mix and that's going to create a darker shadow for this little section under the nose and I'm going to continue that into what I've already got there for the nostril. Not going to go over the nostril dark shadow, but I'm just going to kind of extend the shadow with this dark purple colour. Now some pure, pure white.
using that as you can see as you know as perhaps you would expect to just add some really little you know just a few little really bright highlights reflections of the glasses edge of the nose there within the oh, I've already said that the reflections of the glasses edge of the hair now we don't want to make them too heavy-handed that's the thing you just want a few little touches here and there And then the main thing I need to fix now, I think, is just the eyes themselves. So let's try and sort those out. Now, you may remember from earlier that I, I wasn't too happy with um, the way the pupils went, went, um, went down, basically. And I think part of the problem was I was perhaps using a brush which was a little too big for the job. So I've, I've switched to a small round brush and just using that to repaint the pupils. I'm using my mix of ultramarine blue and the burnt umber. But I'm struggling a little bit to get the exact look in the eyes today. So, so something's not quite right with the shape of the eyes. I'm struggling to see what it is. Um, but let's repaint the highlights. So back in with the pure white. I think the main problem is this left eye. Can't quite see what it is, but uh, that's that's worked a bit better. And then I think what I need to do actually is just there's quite there's a little bit of a dark line along the edge of each iris, or at least on the one on the right. So I've grabbed some of that dark green from earlier. Let's see if this improves things. I think it's definitely helped that eye. Can I use the same colour to improve the left one? Well, it's definitely helped. And I think next, just a very pale version of that same green here to punch up the strength of the reflection in the glasses. I've gone back to my very dark colour now. I just want to, it's the, I think it's this area here is, which sort of captures the expression which I'm missing. So I'm just putting in a little V there of that dark colour. And then over the top of that, let's put in the pale blue. I think I think that's helped a little bit as well. So let's do a quick review of the finished painting. Um, on the whole, I feel I've captured a reasonable likeness of Leslie, but you know, I don't know that you necessarily go yeah that's definitely her so so that's you know a little bit so so I think um, there are some passages of paint here where I feel I got had to kind of work harder than I perhaps should have done so the reflections in the glasses I think on the whole from a distance they're reasonably effective but they could have been a little better however I do or oh, the other thing I didn't quite like is I've got a little too much yellow I think in the face I don't think that works quite in the way I'd hoped 
Um, however, I do like the general lightness of touch and the brushwork, in particular with the hair. I feel that's very loose. I like kind of the sketchiness of that in contrast to the rest of the face. And I feel I've captured a kind of gentle expression in the face as well. So that's worked quite well. So there's the finished painting. I'll show you some close ups as usual. Please remember to click the link below the video on YouTube and that will take you to my website. And then you can kind of zoom in on the painting and like, you know, get a real zoom in on the brushwork and kind of have a better look at how I've layered the paint. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe. And I hope to see you next Sunday for the next episode of The Sunday Art Show. Thanks very much for watching.